Dr. Igor Smirnov, thank you so much for joining Ken, me today. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, for those that are watching, Dr. Smirnov traveled a long way to get here. Flew in from California all the way here to Austin, Texas. And today we are going to discuss electromagnetic radiation, right? EMR, right, yep. And different ways that we can protect ourselves from it. So I guess to begin the interview, Dr. Smirnov, if you could, just tell the viewing audience a little bit about yourself and uh, your background and, and how you got to where you are today. Uh, yeah, um, I graduated from the uh, Naval Academy in St. Petersburg in Russia. And then I got my second high education uh, from uh, St. Petersburg University. I got my PhD in clinical psychology. So my major, major was uh, engineering, physics, and psychology. It's kind of like, kind of like combination. So uh, when I was involved in uh, research in St. Petersburg University, we may, uh, mainly studied uh, the effect of electromagnetic radiation on cellular structures. So it was the first step uh, to develop this technology. Well, now, when you were in, in, at St. Petersburg University there in Russia, and you, you began to learn about the effects of electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation on cells, what were, we, what were you learning? What does is, what is electromagnetic radiation do to cells? Okay, so the major point is that the um, electromagnetic radiation, so-called man-made electromagnetic radiation, uh, it has uh, definitely uh, a negative effect on uh, cell metabology. And uh, uh, the main point was that uh, to develop technology to protect living cells against the effect of uh, EMR. What are some of the negative effects that EMR has on cells? Uh, well, you know, uh, based on this research, we came to conclusion that the uh, main uh, negative effect is that um, cells during the millennials of uh, evolution, they develop certain uh, reaction to different foreign agents. Like, for example, uh, when uh, cells introduced to some kind of like toxic chemicals, they shut down their membrane. And <clears throat> in this case, they try to protect themselves. The same mechanism works for electromagnetic radiation, EMR. When the cells are exposed to uh, microwave radiation, for example, they shut down their membranes, they shut down their channels. So, and uh, in this case, cell cannot get proper nutrition and cannot remove waste out of the cells. Okay. So sooner or later, this type of cell is supposed to die. And this is the major negative effect, the major mechanism for the negative effect. I see. So once you got out of university there in, in St. Petersburg, um, how long after that was it that Chernobyl happened? Uh, about two years after this. And um, uh, when we studied the effect of Chernobyl on the human subjects, I mean, because there was a, a lot of uh, people suffering from radiation disease, um, we found that a certain type of spring mineral water um, actually helped people to go through normal rehabilitation. And um, based on this, uh, you know, uh, finding, uh, we, um, we developed a technology for water activation process. And uh, the major concept is the, uh, you can activate water with the uh, very low intensity, uh, low frequency electromagnetic signal of uh, noise field characteristic. And it can be produced only with the help of a special polymer compound. Uh, the technology for the our wave rider is based on the same principle. And so when you when you talk about the wave rider, this little device sitting right between us here, this is a wave rider. Yes, right. Yes, and, and this uh, is a device that you helped to invent, which protects people, the set their cells, from electromagnetic radiation. So, Dr. Smirnov, you are on a team of scientists in Russia that investigated why certain people were suffering from Chernobyl. And just to reiterate what you just told me, you found out that some people that were doing better than others, it was because of a certain spring water they were drinking. And you investigated that further and found out it was because of noise fields. This machine actually replicated a natural uh, noise field, which quite close resembled to natural uh, earth magnetic field. And it's actually created a so-called natural environment. 
and uh, how it actually works because it's based on the concept that uh, human brain supposed to resonate with natural electromagnetic field, natural electromagnetic um, oscillation, which uh, sometimes can be uh, named like a Schumann frequency, range of Schumann frequency. And uh, it's based on the concept that uh, natural electromagnetic fields, they are not non-coherent, which means they don't have a stable amplitude. Whereas uh, the EMR, they're all the same. Yes, uh, man-made I name it synthetic electromagnetic field. They have a stable coherent signals. Their amplitude is stable. We developed this uh, uh, device to produce a natural uh, electromagnetic field in the range of Schumann frequency field, but with a proper topology or proper structure, which quite close resemble to natural earth magnetic field. So uh, when the human brain uh, works the, the, way, uh, the way that it's supposed to uh, consistently resonate with earth magnetic field. Uh, for this reason, uh, it's, you know, it's quite clear that when you want to take vacation, you're not going to spend vacation in downtown New York or Los Angeles. You try to go to some kind of like, you know, <laughs> natural places like <laughs> uh, somewhere in the, you know, rural area near the lake or near the river, in the forest, whatever. Why? Because the, in this area, rural area, the, uh, there is a natural electromagnetic field not damaged and not transformed by the uh, man-made electromagnetic um, frequencies generated by cell phone towers, uh, radio sets, you know, radio waves, etc., etc. So, um, uh, for the human brain, it's very important to resonate with natural earth magnetic field because it basically control proper function of the human brain. Because how it works, I mean, daytime human brain through sensors absorb information through eyes, ears, and nighttime it's supposed to assimilate, in other words, to analyze this information and put this information in the proper files, let's say files, okay? So if uh, there is certain type of problem, I mean, there is too much information you receive at daytime, you cannot sleep at night. Yeah, you know, I, I visited New York City a couple of years ago. I don't go to New York very often, but I was there for about a week and I literally, I couldn't sleep. Yeah, and exhausted. I you felt know? like it was a different energy that I felt the whole time I was there. Okay, so this machine here is, is currently, we, we have it on here, a little blue light on, and so you can see that this is it's on, so it's generating the noise field that protects us. We're, we're in Austin, Texas, lots of electromagnetic radiation around here, lots right. of cell towers and so forth. This, about how far from this device would, would be protected? From yeah, it's uh, the, uh, 30 feet radius all around. 30 yeah. feet each direction? Yes, each direction, okay. yeah. How exactly would, would you explain that this would work to somebody? I know it's creating a noise field, but is this noise field that's creating um, a stronger field than the, the man-made radiation so that when your body is exposed to the radiation, it just doesn't, doesn't know it's there? How does this work? Okay, so um, as I said, when the uh, um, human body cells exposed to man-made radiation, they shut down their membrane. And eventually these type of cells can gradually develop, you know, problem like DNA damages, etc. Oh, well, we know, we know based on studies that the cell phone radiation is causing brain yeah, tumors. Right. There's no doubt. There's right. lots okay. of studies that show yeah. that. So uh, when uh, the wave rider is on, it, it generates this so-called noise field. And this noise field, it's actually traveled together with the microwave signals. And the microwave signals actually carry a noise field. So uh, in this case, when the noise field, like a piggyback on the microwave signal, approach the cell, cell can recognize the noise field. And in this case, they, uh, you know, the cells uh, don't shut down their membranes because we actually mask a microwave signal uh, using this noise field generator. That, okay. So uh, it allows the cell function normally. I mean, they, they cannot recognize microwave signal anymore okay. and continue to, to normal, uh, I mean, continue to function normally.
That makes sense. So you're basically using the wave, the uh, mic, the EMR signal as a piggyback for the noise signal that your cell then recognizes and doesn't react to. Yeah, right. right. Is it? Would it? Could it be uh, equated to, you know, if you took a dog whistle and you blew it in a person's ear, the noise is still there. I mean, a dog can still hear it, but the person can't. Right. You've, you've pretty much made that the person doesn't hear that frequency, so they're not going to be damaged by it. Kind of like same, yeah. Kind of like idea, that. yeah. Right. Okay. Right. That makes sense. Uh, we conducted research, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, we tested their cell phone, uh, uh, SAR evaluation for the cell phone. Okay, you said SAR evaluation? Yes. What is, what is SAR? A specific absorption rate. So, in other words, um, any gadget supposed to go through SAR testing, any electromagnetic uh, equipment, and uh, usually this lab, they measure the... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, for example, um, for the cell phone, they measure how the uh, electromagnetic field generated by cell phone can be absorbed by the human tissue. Okay, and based on this, they uh, can give either uh, permission for to produce this and sell the cell phone, or you know they can say no, it's too much absorption. Okay, so we tested this equipment at the same lab, which is FCC. Uh, certified lab and actually this research uh, showed that when uh, the wave ride is on and was at the distance of seven feet from the tested cell phone the SAR value was reduced up to 40 percent that's yeah, it's very significant that's a very significant, significant. yes right in SAR. right yeah and, and most most electronic devices like a cell phone so they have a SAR rating yeah so you know how much EMR you're going to absorb from that cell phone Problem is that we're not lo just looking at a cell phone. We're not just looking at a, one microwave. We're not just looking at one cell tower. If you're living in a big city like this, we're looking at hundreds of thousands of devices that's right, within yeah. a square mile. Yeah. And so we, you have this effect that's amplified over and over and over again. So just to reiterate, this machine then is producing a noise field that piggybacks EMR fields, makes your body not realize that there's electromagnetic re radiation, so the cells don't react to it. You're not going to have the cell damage. Reduces right. the absorption ratio, the SAR, by 40%. Exactly, yeah. That yeah. is sizable reduction. Yeah. yeah. Um, another test we conducted in uh, vitro for um, astrocytes, human brain cells. Uh, these cells were exposed to cell phone radiation uh, with wave rider and without wave rider. And uh, what it showed that the introduction of the wave rider significantly compensate negative effect of uh, cell phone radiation on the human brain cells. On the astrocytes. Yeah, on the astrocytes. And yeah. that's a lot, of, a lot of the brain cancers that were being caused and that are being caused, yeah. astrocytoma. Right, right. So that's one of the brain cancers. Yeah, this is, this is a, a device that is so needed today. I'm not aware of anything else that's comparable to this as far as protecting a home. So I've seen the people that kind of have gone, what looks like kind of gone overboard. They, they'll have their whole walls with different materials, lead or whatever, to protect them. And they've got it on their ceiling. And they're just kind of like living in a cave right. because they're afraid of all of the electromagnetic radiation, which I understand. It's very dangerous. And we are being harmed by it. But this then gives people an option with, with a wave rider in their home that they could still have the cell phone signals coming and the Wi-Fi still on and still live in today's society. You know, if, if you took away my Wi-Fi and my cell phone and all that I use on a daily basis, I couldn't do my business. Right. So yeah. we, we need that in today's society. But this offers a real viable protection from the electromagnetic radiation that we're all being exposed to every day. Just so everyone that's watching knows this, I, I have actually have two wave riders in our house. We've got a, a large home, so we need two of them to protect the whole house. But we run these the wave riders twenty four seven because I've got I got four kids. I see. And yeah. so, you know, I've been concerned about electromagnetic radiation for a long time and felt quite hopeless to be honest with you, because I didn't know what to do. I mean, you can't stop the cell you can't go turn off the cell phone towers at night. You can't stop yeah. the signals from coming. They're gonna keep coming. But this gives people a real viable option to protect themselves and their family, their yeah, children. That's right. Talk about Dr. Masari Moto in Japan. Uh, yeah, um, I knew Masari Moto uh, and about a couple years ago. Uh, uh, Masari Moto was testing this equipment uh, in his lab. 
And, uh, you know, everybody knows he's a very famous researcher and uh, he proved that uh, probably one, the first who proved that water has memory. Water can recognize different um, effect uh, and uh, memorize this effect. So he conducted tests uh, regarding the effect of cell phone radiation on water. And uh, for 30 minutes he exposed a glass of water to cell phone radiation. And then he uh, freeze this water and obviously then, you know, uh, analyze this uh, ice. And, uh, you know, the structure of ice was completely damaged. I mean, it was really bad, bad situation. Okay, uh, then he repeated this test, but at this time he turned on wave rider and keep this, kept this wide, uh, wave rider about 10 feet away from this uh, sample of water. And amazingly, the result was uh, the structure of the ice was returned back to normal geometry. Mm. And this is very interesting because the structure of the ice is based on the proper natural normal hydrogen bonding of water molecules. So in other words, it's clearly indicated that the cell phone radiation damage hydrogen bonding in the water and actually, let's say, poison water let's say, because you cannot drink this water afterwards because it's very damaging. And um, on the other hand, when the wave rider was turned on and uh, it actually showed that the wave rider actually helped to restore the normal structure of the hydrogen bonding in the water. Yeah. Hydrogen bonding of the water is very important because all the fluids in the human body, like blood, lymph, or for example, uh, in the plants like uh, juice, it's based on the proper structure of the hydrogen bonding of the water. So, and uh, if there is any distortion of the hydrogen bonding, it's immediately lead to uh, some uh, serious uh, degenerative uh, process in the, either in the plants or in the human body. Yeah, that, that is fascinating yeah. that, that it had that effect on the hydrogen bonding. Because, yeah, everything in, everything in our bodies is it's mostly hydrogen, right? Right. We've got a lot of hydrogen. And so if the hydrogen bond is damaged, the body could be damaged. And that, that, that experiment that you just described, you sent me some photos of that and, um, and you weren't exaggerating. Just so you know, he's not exaggerating. You, you we'll show these, these photos on the screen so people can see. Right. But the, the, the ice or the, the, was it pictures of ice or water? It was ice. Yeah. It was yeah. ice, the, the original ice that he had, uh, that he took pictures of after being exposed to cell phone radiation, there was no geometry or symmetry to it at all. It was, yeah, it's it, completely it was damaged. Totally the structure damaged. was yeah, completely damaged. And yeah. then the only thing he changed, he kept the radiation on it, but he turned on the wave rider, and then the photos of the ice looked perfectly geometrical, yeah. just like you would picture a piece of uh, uh, a nice like a slow snow, flow, yeah, like a snowflake. Yeah, snowflake. Yeah, yeah nice, beautiful. Yeah, it was really flake, amazing. Yeah. The the picture tells a thousand words when it comes to that. Yeah, right. Well, Dr. Smirno, this has been fascinating. Every time I talk to you, which has been, we've done a couple of interviews over the last several years. Right. Every time I talk to you, I learn more and I'm more fascinated about this, especially in light of the fact that as technology continues to double every year and we live more and more in this wireless age, electromagnetic radiation, I think, is probably, it's definitely one of the top two threats to our health that we need to deal with. This gives people a real solution to that, living yeah, in today's definitely. wireless society. So thank you so much for spending your time with thank us you. today. And uh, if you're watching and if you want to learn more about the Wave Rider, we've negotiated a, a huge discount uh, on the pricing with these amazing devices. I've got two of them in my home. Just click the link below.